In addition to viewing equipment information, you can also take a look at service history on file for the customer. And you do that by hitting the history button in the top right. This will load up with detailed service history for the customer's location. With that, you will see the last 10 calls. And it can be any type of call. It could be a sales call, a service call, an install call. All the different call types will show up here on the device. With the calls, you'll see the type of call. You'll see the tech that did the work, the date the work was performed, the invoice number, the invoice date, the total amount, as well as the job instructions, the work done, and the work suggested notes. And you'll see that for all the previous calls. As you scroll down, you'll be going further into the past on the service history. Once you're done taking a look at service history, we can head back to the call progress by hitting the progress button in the top left. This will bring us back to our current job progress. So now we're getting ready to dispatch out to our call. At this point, we can put in our expected duration. And this is our expected drive time. This is our way of letting dispatch know that we are on our way to the call and that we expect to get there in 20 minutes. Once we're ready to begin, we click the dispatch button and we are now dispatched to our call. The office staff will see that we have now dispatched to the call and that we expect to arrive to the customer's location in 20 minutes. After dispatching, you will go through to now the step two, which is the on route screen. You will notice that this screen has a much bigger map so you can view the map of the location. You will also notice down at the bottom there's a navigation button. This button will actually allow you to load up the navigation software on your device, whether that be Apple Maps or Google Maps. It will actually pinpoint your service location and you can go ahead and hit the start button in the top right to begin your turn-by-turn -turn directions. Once you're done using the map you can go ahead and hit the center button of the iPad, get you back to the main screen, click back on the SW remote icon and it'll bring you right back into your job where you left off. On route is simply a placeholder between when we dispatched and when we put ourselves on site. So now that we're pulling up in front of the customer's location, let's pretend that we drove there and we followed our directions, we can hit the next button and get ready to put ourselves on site. This will put the job instructions right in front of us again so we can read them. Also, we can go in and set our expected duration for our on-site time. Now, this expected duration is a little bit different. This has actually been defaulted by the call type that you're on. If told to do so, you can leave this expected duration alone because the office is already given an expected duration. If they ask you to change it, you can go through and change your expected duration here by changing these numbers down on the hours and minutes. Once you're ready to mark yourself on-site, you click the on-site button. And this will show that you are now on site at the customer's location. The office staff will see that you're on site and it will now bring you through to the step four build invoice screen. This is where you can go through now and build an invoice for the customer. Before we step forward I want to talk about the invoice number here. This is where you can plug in an invoice number if the office tells you to change it. In addition off to the right here you have tax code. This is where you can select the tax code on file for the job. If the office tells you to select tax codes, this is where you would go through and select them. After selecting the invoice number and the tax code, we now can begin to add items onto our invoice. And you can add items in three different ways. The first way is to use the scan button here in the top left. This will allow you to scan a barcode if you have a barcoded printed out price book. You can scan the barcode of the task and add it right there. Another way you can add items is hit the plus item button and this will bring up fields where you can go through now and add an item. And inside here you can add items in two different ways. You can add items by typing in the item number or the description. And again this is the hot search. So if you needed to look for a certain kind of an item, maybe you're looking for your diagnostic, you can just type in DIAG and hit search and any items with either DIAG in the item number or the description will show up here on the device. This way you can find the appropriate item. You could select an item now and it'll load up the item that you've selected right here into an edit item screen. This will allow you to go through and edit some of the information. You can edit the description. You can edit the price level. If your tasks have appropriate price levels you can go through and select the price level for this customer. 
If given permissions to, you can also edit the price. You can mark an item as an add-on, as taxable, or discountable to here on the right hand side, only if told to do so. For example, I might not discount my diagnostics, so I can uncheck the discountable checkbox. This means I will not be able to apply a discount to it when I get to the discount screen. I can also go through and identify this item as being performed under an agreement or under a warranty by hitting the plus agree or plus warranty button. Once I'm done editing the item, I can go ahead and hit done, and that will add the item onto my invoice. And with that, I'll see the item number, the description, the quantity, and the price. So I see some information right here on file about that item. Let's go in and add another item, and to do that, we hit the plus item button. This will bring up a screen now where we can go through and add items. The first way I showed you was to type in the item number or the description and click search. This way is the other way to do it, and that's by hitting the catalog button and loading up your price book to view that information. So you hit the catalog and it will now load up some, some price book sections where you can go ahead and select your appropriate price book sections. So for example, if you're a time and materials billing, you might go into the labor or the parts section to load them up. Or if you're more task-based billing, you can hit the task button and go into your task sections. This will load up all of your different task sections you might have on file in your price book. I can select the category right here, and then this will load up all of the different groups that I have on file. I can select the group, and this will load up any item that's inside that group. And now I can go through and select one of those individual items inside that group. And this will bring me through to that edit invoice item screen. This is another way you can add items onto the invoice. Again, you can make edits to the item, whether it be the description, the price level, the price, or if it's discountable. Once you're done making those edits, you can hit done, and that will now add that item onto the invoice. You will now see that you have two items on your invoice here. You have the diagnostic as well as that other task that you've added. This is where we can go through and maybe sell a service agreement to a customer, and we do that by hitting the plus agreement button. This will bring up a section where you can go through now and select the type of agreement that you're selling that customer. And you do that by hitting the drop down next to type and selecting one of the agreement types that you have back inside your successware. You can select based off the agre agreement types you have. For example, if you have a prepaid agreement, you can select one of the prepaid, or if you have a perpetual, you can select one of the perpetual agreements. For example, if it's a perpetual agreement, you'll see that I have my collected amount showing $15 because I'm collecting the first month's billing right here on this invoice. Or if I were to select a prepaid agreement, you will see the prepaid information pops up as well. So this agreement here is $200 and the collected amount is $200, showing that I'm collecting in full for this agreement. The most important field here is to make sure that the collected amount represents the amount that you want to add onto the invoice. The rest of the fields can be edited by the office before this invoice is posted. This just shows what agreement you have sold the customer. And once you're done, you can click save and that will add that agreement onto your invoice. And you will now see a line item to represent that agreement. In addition to selling agreements, if you were out there doing a visit off of a pre-existing agreement, you can hit the plus visit button and actually select one of the visits you may have on file. So if you have visits on file from a pre-existing agreement, you can go in right here and select them. And that will add them to the invoice as well. I do not have any visits, but if I did, they'd be listed right here. In addition to that, if you wanted to apply a discount to your invoice, you could do that by hitting the plus discount button, only if told to use this button for discounting. This will load up a screen where you can go through and select your discount type. You could do it in a flat percentage by hitting the percent button and changing that amount. You can do it under amount by hitting the amount button and keying in the amount that you're taking as a discount. Or lastly, you can hit the type button at the top and select from pre-existing discount types that they have back inside the office. This will take a discount off of any line item where discountable is still checked. So in my case, it will take it off the line item that I've added, but it will not take it off my diagnostic because I unchecked discountable on that line item. 
I click Save and that will save the discount on this invoice and then apply that discount only to line items that are marked discountable. You'll notice down here my third task has discountable in the bottom left hand corner here. That will show that this line item is discountable and ultimately in the next screen when I build my invoice it'll take a discount off that line item. The last thing I could do inside the invoice screen here is hit the notes button and add in work done and work suggested notes. These notes can be typed, they can be doing the talk to type if your device has it, or if they've loaded up inside of your admin.sw remote website, boilerplate work done and work suggested notes, you can go through and select from those as well. And you'll see that that will add the work done and work suggested notes based off that list. That list is managed in the admin site and uh, you can call the SW Remote support team if you want to learn how to add in more of those boilerplate notes into your work done and work suggestion fields. For example, with work suggested here, I might go ahead and do the talk to type. So the keyboard pops up, I hit the microphone button, and I'm going to tell it what I recommend. Recommended annual maintenance. And you will see that it will fill in my notes for me just by speaking into it. Once I'm done, I hit exit, and that will save those notes on that invoice. At this point, I'm ready to complete my invoice, and I do that by hitting the Next button. And this will bring me through to the next screen, and ultimately it will build an invoice here. The invoice is going to be right here on the device in front of us, and it's also going to be back inside Successware. So your office can see this invoice at this time as well. After hitting Next, you will notice that the Review Invoice screen will load up. This will only happen if you have the authorization checkbox in the admin site. If you have it unchecked, you will not come to this authorization screen. In front of us now, we will see a work authorization. And with that, we'll see some information. First off at the top, we'll have our logo and our information. Below that, we'll have the invoice number and the customer's information. We'll have the work suggested and work done notes. We'll have the line items on the invoice. And with those line items, you'll have the agreements, the tasks, as well as any of the line items that you've added in there. With that, you'll have a subtotal, you'll have the tax, and then you'll have a discount total, because that'll take the, t the discount right off that task that you have marked discountable. And then you'll have a final total right there in front of you. In addition, if you've loaded up any content blocks inside of your admin site, those are going to show up down here at the bottom of the invoice as well. This way, we can present this to the customer along with the invoice information so that the customer now can sign and authorize the above work. We would hand the device to the customer and have the customer sign using their finger, authorizing the above work. Once we're done, we click the Authorize button, and we have now captured an authorization signature from the customer. This authorization signature will be saved and stored back inside Successware.